Well, look, we are very, very proud and excited about Helios. Oh, somebody gave you our chip. Yeah. Who did that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> look, let's MI hold it up. Yes, absolutely. Make sure everyone sees. This is our MI455 um, chip. It is the most advanced chip we've ever built. It's 70% more, um, more transistors than um, our last generation MI355. And that's the Helios on our screen right now. That's right. And so he, the, 72 of these go into that huge system that allows you to really get you know, the best performance, the best efficiency, and the overall total cost of ownership that you need to run all of this AI. And you know, Liz, probably the main thing I want people to understand is the demand for AI is just incredible. It's going through the roof. You know, everyone, you, you mentioned some of the guests that we had. Um, everyone that I talk to, all of our customers are saying, Lisa, help us get more compute. Because we're at this place where, you know, we're just starting to experience um, AI everywhere. And what I really want to do is make sure that we proliferate AI so that everyone can experience the power. We are at the Consumer Electronics Show. I mean, what consumer technology or experiences in the next, let's just say, 12 months will blow people away? Well, I think it's um, a whole bunch of things. I mean, today, everyone's, you know, most everyone's experienced a chat GPT or a Gemini-like yeah. moment. Now you go down to AI PCs that be can become personal assistants for you. And now you go down to the edge. I was hearing a little bit of what Jason was saying about personalized healthcare. You know, that's something that I'm really, really passionate about. And the key, Liz, is the more we use it, the more it can help you. And this is all about getting consumers familiar with the technology and trusting that the technology uh, can really be like your best friend. So you talk about um, 72 of these in the Helios. How much does one of these cost? It's not cheap. <laughs> let's, let's put it this way. This is all about how do we get incredible performance it's 320 billion transactions. okay but if i if i drop this what would you say liz you owe me like you break it you buy it kind of thing you, you what, would you would owe us um tens of thousands of dollars tens of thousands of dollars yeah. so 72 of these who's buying them very large customers open ai you know greg brockman was um, on stage with us uh, we love the work with open ai uh, they are really pioneering some of the uh, cl clear largest models whether you're talking about consumer or enterprise, you know, Oracle, Meta, we have a long list of customers. Here's that... where. Well, look, I think these are the trillion dollar club getting together. A billion dollars is probably a drop in the ocean for both of them. It's over five years. And um, what I think the aim of this at the end of the day is to try and automate and speed up as much of the, uh, partly the drudgery of doing lab work, because lab work, just like as if you were a doctor, uh, in, in a clinic, clinical setting, you need to take a lot of notes, a lot of details. But at the same time, I think they're investing in what appears to be automating 24-7 experiments, things that uh, human beings just can't do. And, and, and I know, having been a scientist, that sometimes your life is on hold because you have to go back and deal with your experiments, your cells, or whatever it is that you're running. And so a lot of these things, I think, could speed up and also make the life of the scientist a little bit easier. At the end of the day, though, I think the aim here is to try and get scientific discoveries translated to drugs quicker and get them to market quicker. Sam, what does this mean for Eli Lilly's rivals? Do you expect that we'll see some of its competitors also ramp up their AI endeavors given its partnership with a company like NVIDIA? Well, a lot of pretty much all pharma companies. And I just want to point you to a recent survey that BI, Bloomberg Intelligence, has done that looked at 10 different industries, uh, one of which being the pharmaceutical industry, asked executives, what are you doing with this? What are you trying to get to? What is the aim at the end? Everybody is at this. This is not something specific to Lilly. And you know, Google, for example, has, has through DeepMind, has created an agentic AI called Google Scientist. It's like, I think four agents or five agents who interact with each other and check each other's hypotheses. So a lot of this is going on in all companies. But of course, here we have Lilly, one of the richest pharma companies around in terms of the amount of cash flow that it's got, really being able to uh, spend the money without really impacting its um, its balance sheet and cash flow. And, and, and I'm pretty sure everybody's at this, but clearly this is the news du jour, if you like.
Absolutely. Like you said, um, it's a drop in the bucket for both of these companies. But when you have a number like one billion dollars and these big uh, brand names, number. it gets people's attention. Um, what Absolutely. also gets my attention, Sam, is Moderna. Moderna, obviously mm -hmm. one of the vaccine makers during uh, the pandemic, uh, but it's had a rough go at it recently because it's so dependent on these vaccines. Um, and we have an administration that is um, kind of anti-vaccine right now. Yet, Moderna pre-announced at the J.P. Morgan Healthcare Conference that its U.S. COVID business did better than expected. Is Moderna starting to stabilize? Well, one would hope so. They've stuck with their um, aim of growing 2026 by 10%. But, you know, if you look back at the beginning of the year where the company in 2025 started with guidance and where we ended up, we're a good five, six hundred million dollars short of what the hope was at the beginning of the year. So everybody, I think, knows that this is a very difficult market to call for exactly the reasons you just highlighted. There is a constant change in the way that the administration in the U.S. and not just the U.S. elsewhere is also dealing with vaccination, um, particularly in the COVID uh, side of things. Other vaccinations are still uh, pretty much well settled in, in at least outside the US. The problem also that, that um, Moderna is going to face or has been facing is that there are lots of people. There's, I think my patent colleagues say there are at least 20 um, various directions of legal cases or trials going on different groups saying you're infringing my patents or you infringe my patents and you need to because there was billions and billions of dollars that um and revenues so some of that is coming potentially in the march time frame for eli lee against um uh, a trial coming up against arbutus another company that's listed in the u.s so some of that is i think something that might keep people from getting too excited about modernist guidance today Welcome back. China is working to outpace the United States in the artificial intelligence race with new models closing the gap. While U.S. companies compete with each other for dominance, Fox Business's Madison Allworth is live now with the latest on the AI arms race and how the U.S. is staying ahead. Madison, good morning to you. Good morning. Who is winning this race? Good morning, Maria. You know, the race is definitely on. And the company to enter the market the earliest has an early lead. Looking at global AI web traffic, OpenAI's ChatGPT takes the cake easily, as you can see there, or I really should say pie. Because now when you think of a question, instead of saying Google it, people say ask chat. But Google is not taking this lying down. You see they have the second largest share of AI traffic. And year-over-year -year growth in monthly web users has been accelerating for Google's Gemini, while ChatGPT is starting to stagnate. Now, according to artificial analysis, GBT 5.2 scores best on their intelligence index, with Claude, which is Anthropic, just a hair behind. This is a composite metric that incorporates 10 different AI intelligence evaluations, very comprehensive and respected within the industry. You'll notice that names like Zuckerberg's Meta and Elon's XAI are missing from that top five, but industry experts say this is just the start of the AI race. I expect XAI to continue to be a very strong player. They're making significant investments in the area of logic and reasoning. I expect them to continue to make incredible progress, and I would never rule out Elon as, as one of the top players in this space. But when it comes to agentic work, which is AI systems that can operate with a degree of autonomy to complete multiple step tasks without human guidance, GBT 5.2 and Claude Opus 4.5 are tied. And then GLM and DeepSeek are just steps behind. Both are Chinese large language models. That is our true competitor in the AI race. Private capital spending on AI in the U.S. is set to hit $527 billion in 2026, revised up from $465 billion, whereas China forecasted to spend just a fraction of that at $70 billion this year. Experts say it's not just about how much money is being spent, but who is leading that charge that gives them confidence. In China, it's government funds, but here in the U.S., it's private industry, which fuels innovation and adoption. Maria? Well, Madison, that is great. I mean, this is such an important story. Thank you for that.